We're currently looking at a North Electric CX100. North Electric was one of the smaller manufacturers of uh, telephony equipment in the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they had one uh, really neat product line. Uh, they had several different products, but one of them was the CX100, CX60, CX30, and then of course they had a CX1000. This was a 100% relay controlled system. Unlike a Stroger step-by-step -step and a crossbar type of a system, this used multi-contact relays, which is currently these items here, to accomplish the same thing as a crossbar on a cross point would, um, or the equivalent of a bank and wiper configuration in a Stroger system. This system is a very quiet system. You could actually have this in your house, in the front room, and watch TV, and you'd hear a phone call go through, but it would be very quiet. Um, this is an 80-line system, and this is a TPL central office. Uh, the Stroger systems and the crossbar systems, uh, for the most part, were TPS, which was called terminal per station. Well, this is terminal per line. What that means is you have 10 parties on one line and it cannot be changed. Uh, so in a, a community such as where this was located, um, there was 80 telephone lines and each line had 10 numbers which would be 800 numbers. Well, in the normal configuration of a uh, telephone office, everything's been issued in thousands group because out of a prefix you have 10,000 numbers and this machine uh, prefix is 448 and there's 1,000 numbers coming into it even though 200 of them go to intercept because there's nothing to physically connect them to. The remaining 800 numbers uh, appear on the line relays. Uh, we will make a call through this. These, uh, are, this is a link circuit, so all of this equipment right here in one vertical row is one single link. So this, in this particular half of the cabinet is four links. These are the line relays, and then up here at the top is common control relays. Uh, the tones that the North Electric machine, this particular one, which is manufactured in 1957, uses a vacuum tube uh, in order to produce the continuous tone for dial tone and then it has a RC type circuit in it for uh, the interrupter to provide the fairly close to 60 and 120 IPM interruptions that you would have on either vacant levels or a busy line. Alrighty, I dialed one line that I have busy, and of course you hear in the background the busy. Now you hear ringing a different line in the North machine. And this is a seven digit uh, telephone switch. Um, normally the CX's were five digit or four digit depending on the, the configuration, but this has got on the back of it and a couple of extra relays added in order to be a seven digit system. And that was done uh, by North Electric. Um, of course on the collector's network this is exchange code 4482XXX is the numbers that come into this machine. Um, I don't currently have any outgoing trunks yet wired to this. I will have uh, in the future, I do have incoming trunks from the outside world into the North machine. Uh, just as a side note, in order to add uh, a trunk for each group of trunks, you lose uh, 10 lines. And so the ones level and the zero level is the reason that it's only an 80 line system because we lost 20 lines for the trunks. Um, 
the North machine was uh, very sophisticated for its day, but yet it was also limited. It was designed to be in very, very tiny rural areas, as well as uh, this particular type of machine has been installed on uh, military uh, naval ships uh, as the onboard communications. Uh, there's been some articles written about that. And the North CX-100 is uh, approximately 16 foot long and weighs about 1,400 pounds. We're currently looking at the other half, uh, or the other side of the uh, CX-100 basic frame. It is 6 foot long and uh, approximately 6 and a half foot tall. This is link 5, 6, and 7. And of course you can tell they're all just duplicated the same thing over and over. This is a North Electric uh, telephone that's mounted in my North Electric system, so I will call that number and uh, it will be ringing it at 20 hertz. Place one more call and I will select the 50 hertz ringing pattern. We're currently looking at the incoming trunk connector. This has got six links in it, so we can have six incoming calls from the outside world. Uh, in the case of uh, this exchange, we have uh, four of them uh, coming in for CNET, which are tandem through uh, my Western step-by-step -step switch. And then we're going to have two reserved, one for the operator and one for um, uh, ver busy line verification, which I plan on someday making working. Uh, of the CX100s that I've known about, this is a fairly rare cabinet. Uh, generally, the other exchanges were in such remote areas, they would just use a line circuit uh, to complete a call, which was when they went off Earth, they got dial tone and dialed a uh, three, four, five digit number, depending on what was required, and then it would complete the call that way. With my system here, I do have the trunk connector, and uh, this is the only one that, uh, of the people who have North Electric machines, I have the only trunk connector that's known about uh, in existence. We're currently looking at the miscellaneous uh, cabinet. This has got the dial tone generator, ringing uh, interrupter, alarming, and miscellaneous type circuits. Up here at the top we have some make busy switches, then we have the fuses, and then we just have relays for uh, the allotter, group controller, and then we have in here the interrupter, ringing, timing circuit. Down here we have a vacuum tube. This is what's currently used for the tones, uh, dial tone, busy, and so forth. And then more common equipment. Well, this is, I believe, the interrupter. Got a working the standby. And then there's just other miscellaneous control timing equipment. And then down here towards the bottom was the original trunks that was installed when this machine was in uh, real life service. These will be back working in the future on the uh, outgoing part of the CX machine. Now we're looking at the last two bays. This is the uh, power bay. It has uh, the fusing in it from the central office battery as well as a test panel. Um, it has a little uh, miniature mainframe test uh, meters. If I had a shoe hooked up to this which would plug into where the subscriber's line is, I could look at the cable pair. Over on this side we have here and here. These are the vibrator ringing generators so when the AC power fails, these take DC and produce a 20 
30, 40, 50, and 60 hertz ringing, which is a pulsating DC uh, signal. And of course, these only run during when there is a line being rung, um, because these things will run an office battery down very quickly because they're not power efficient. But for 1957, it was what they had for reserve. Down lower, this is the under this cover is the relays for transferring between the AC subcycle and the DC ringing, and a few alarm relays and just miscellaneous stuff. This is a K5 subcycle ringing generator, and this has five frequencies in it. And I have modified this plant so that the generator is only turned on when I actually are ringing a phone, because this thing here is not uh, power efficient at all and it is quite a load on the AC source. Over in this bay is just some miscellaneous mounted auxiliary equipment that I've collected over the years uh, that fit in a 19 inch rack.